This Dell Inspiron was one of the most mediocre laptops you could buy in 2009. Everything about this computer is just average, from the lower mid-range Pentium processor to 4 gigabytes of DDR2, even though most computers use DDR3 at this time, to the average consumer grade build quality that this device has. Needless to say, this computer is quite boring with nothing interesting about it whatsoever. And to most people in the United States, this is just another 15 year old computer that belongs in the trash. But I stopped and decided that I would see what this computer had to offer. After some testing, I was quite amazed by what this computer could do. And I realized something. Within the next 15 years, the way computers are sold is going to be quite different than it has been in the past 30 years. I'll talk more about my thoughts and opinions later on in this video, but for now I'm going to start with the story. The story starts when I bought this computer in a lot with 10 other laptops. When I got it, it had Windows 7 installed on it and ran quite well. But in 2024, it's not really a good idea to use Windows 7 online due to security vulnerabilities. So I decided to upgrade this computer. I tried to upgrade the RAM, but I was surprised, but I was surprised to find that it took DDR2 instead of DDR3. So I just left the original 4 gigs of RAM in it. Also, I was able to upgrade the storage to a 120 gigabyte SSD. Most people would say that the best operating system for this computer would be Linux Mint, and they would be right. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I decided to install Windows 11. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Before you click off of this video, just hear me out. Yes, I know Windows 11 is horribly bloated spyware that only exists so that evil corporate overlords can sell your data to Satan. Yes, I get that. But the unfortunate truth is that Windows 11 will still be used by many people because that's the operating system that comes on the computer when it's sold. And the point of this video is I want to see how this computer can handle modern software, at least when it comes to the software that most businesses will end up using. When installing Windows 11 using an easy to boot drive, it was quite easy and didn't give me any trouble. It even recognized the Windows 7 product key and was able to be used to activate Windows 11 Home. Of course, considering the specs of this device, this computer is not fast at all. It's actually pretty slow. But I am able to open up a YouTube video and watch YouTube. I'm able to open up Microsoft 365 and make edits to Word documents and PowerPoints. While it doesn't work great with the browser version of the Microsoft PowerPoint, it does still work pretty decently with LibreOffice Impress. And I'm also able to use Copilot, which does run online but does work just fine on this computer. I'm even able to join a Zoom meeting with it. I'm not saying you should go out and buy a 15-year-old computer. It's quite apparent that this computer is quite slow. And that's not surprising considering how old it is and considering that it has worse performance than a Core 2 Duo. But the fact that something like this is even able to run Windows 11 and is even able to be somewhat functional is impressive. Don't get me wrong, this computer would make a terrible daily Windows PC, but someone could use this computer for basic tasks in Windows. If you got just a couple years newer gaming laptop from 2012, that would have much better performance than this computer, and it would be substantially more usable. The reason why I'm impressed that this computer is able to run Windows 11 and be somewhat usable is because this wasn't always the case. You couldn't always run the newest software on really old hardware. For example, what would happen if you tried to run Windows 7 or Windows Vista 
on a computer from 1994. Well, the minimum requirement for Windows Vista is about 500 megabytes of RAM and an 800 megahertz 32-bit processor. If we take a look at this 30-year-old computer magazine, some of the fastest business desktops only had 100 megahertz processors and a maximum of 128 megabytes of RAM. In the decades prior to this computer, people needed to consistently upgrade their computer just to keep up with the latest software. And during those past decades, computers kept drastically improving. When it comes to modern computers, more and more people are realizing that they don't have to upgrade their computer every four years anymore. More and more people continue to use a computer that's over six years old. It's not that new computers aren't getting better, well, except maybe a few exceptions, but in general, computers are getting much, much better every year. I would say that the newest processors today are much better than processors three years ago. The hardware is becoming so good that the main bottleneck to a computer is its user. The thing that makes me realize that something is going to change is that more and more people are holding on to their old devices and less money is getting spent on buying new devices. And in one way or another, tech companies are going to find their way to get their money. Otherwise, they'll go out of business. And that's not surprising because that's just what companies do. They, they're there to make money. But what I wonder is what changes are going to happen that are going to cause people to spend more money on tech? Maybe devices will become more fragile and people will have to replace them when they break. Or maybe, or maybe prices for computers will have to increase and people who can't afford a new computer will either buy used or rent a new computer. Maybe all computing will be centralized and the computing power you get will depend on what subscription you have. So I have to wonder, how usable will a new computer be in 2039?